If your goal is to live life on your own terms without worrying about where your next dollar is coming from, this will be one of the most important videos you ever watch. Over the last three years, I've discovered a cheat code that'll change your life and make it easier for you to create multiple streams of income. The cheat code is called business credit. Business credit is the key to growing as a new entrepreneur. And today I'm gonna show you how to get it. Business credit comes in multiple forms, but one of my favorite and easiest for you to start with is business credit cards. Not only do they help you get the funds needed to grow a successful business, but they help you get rewards like discounted flights, travel, and access to exclusive events just by spending the money that you normally would. With so much information out there, it's easy to get lost in the process of building business credit. But don't worry, today I'm gonna to show you a few ways to unlock the power of business credit cards. And you don't have to have a big multi-million dollar business with a bunch of employees to do it. By the end of this video, I'm gonna show you why business credit cards are so powerful, how you can qualify to actually get business credit cards. I'm also gonna tell you some of the best credit card lenders to get started with, and even walk you through an actual business credit card application so you know exactly how to get started with your first round of funding. But first, have you ever stopped to think to yourself why business credit cards are suddenly so popular now and why everyone is talking about them, including me? Well, there are a few reasons. The first one being because a lot of us start this journey with little to no money to be able to invest in a business startup. I know that was the case for me when I first started. I was working my nine to five job and struggling living check to check. Drop a comment below if you can relate to the same type of situation. But then I discovered that business credit cards can be the easiest and quickest way for you to get the money you need to start a business from scratch. Let me show you how this works with a real life example. I'll use a Toro car sharing business in this case because I've used this exact method multiple times. Let's say you buy a Honda Accord that you plan to rent on the Toro platform below market value for around 10K. The car is already valued at around $12,000, which means you already have built-in equity of $2,000 in case this car ever gets total or you plan to sell it. Now, you would make this purchase using a business credit card with 12 months 0% interest. This means the money that you spend on this car won't accrue any extra interest for this specified period of time. And there are plenty of lenders who offer cards like this. Later in the video, I'll give you my favorite one and walk you through the application to show you how to get approved for the card. But back to our example, after your market research, you estimate that you can make about $1,000 a month renting this specific car on the Toro platform. So you start renting the car out and then you would use the money that you make every month to pay down the balance on the business credit card. Technically, this means you should be able to pay off your business credit card in about 10 months. But let's say you run into some expenses and realistically, it takes you more like 11 months. Well, after those 11 months, you'll be able to completely pay off the balance of the car and now you own this car free and clear of any debt. Now here's where the magic happens. Because you use the income that the car generated to pay off your balance, you never actually came out of pocket any money of your own. Plus, you have 100% equity in the car, so if you ever decide to sell it, or worst case scenario, it gets totaled by a renter, all of the money from the payout goes directly into your pocket. And that's not all. The most important part of this is that any future income this car continues to generate goes directly to you as an additional income stream. And once again, you never had to put any of your own money into this business. Crazy, right? This works for any business model as long as you can use the income that the business makes to pay off the credit card in a reasonable time period. Now, if you've ever used credit cards before, you probably know that when you spend money on them, the lender will report that as utilization on your personal credit profile. And if you start piling up too much credit card debt, this can end up really hurting your credit score. With business credit cards, lenders already know that you're likely to spend higher amounts in your business, so most of them won't even report the money that you spend on your personal credit profile. This means that that $10,000 that you use to invest to start your total car sharing business in that case, never even affected your credit score. And because lenders know that businesses are gonna spend a lot more than individuals, you're more likely to get higher limits on your business credit cards than you would with your personal credit card. You're usually gonna get about three to five times more. In my case, all of my business credit card limits have started somewhere between 10 to $30,000. And that's life-changing amounts of money if you learn how to use it the right way. And I'll show you a few credit cards that are more likely to give you higher limits in a minute. But first, you have to understand the different ways that you're able to qualify for business credit. The important thing to note here is that business credit cards are actually designed for smaller businesses that are looking to grow their operations just like me and you. So you don't have to be bringing in hundreds of thousands of dollars to be eligible for them. 
And although I do recommend it, you don't even technically have to be an LLC when you first start out to qualify. There are multiple types of businesses out there, including LLCs, corporations, and a type referred to as a sole proprietor or sole prop for short. A sole proprietor is simply an unincorporated business that's ran by one person, where the business and the person aren't considered separate legal entities. In other words, it's just you running your business and mostly everything you do in your business is tied back to you personally. So if you haven't yet created an LLC, but you're selling the product, you're exchanging services for payment, or even spending time researching how to build a business plan, you most likely fall under the designation of sole prop. And this is okay. Business credit card lenders still give credit to sole props, just like they do LLCs and other types of business entities. Once your business begins to grow, and more importantly, you start to gain more assets within your business, you may wanna consider switching over to a separate business entity like an LLC. And the process of creating your own LLC is simple and doesn't have to cost you hundreds of extra dollars for a company to do it for you if you know how to do it yourself. So when you are ready to start your business entity, check out the DIY LLC guide in the description below. This guide will walk you through the step-by-step -step process of creating your LLC in any state and also show you how to obtain your EIN on the IRS website as well. Your EIN is your employer identification number, and it's gonna be important in this case because you won't be using your social security number anymore once you do have your LLC. And this is knowledge you're gonna be able to use forever, especially as you're moving into full-fledged entrepreneurship. But regardless of if you're a sole prop or a LLC, if you want the best chance at getting approved for business credit cards and to be able to start earning rewards like discounted travel and free cash back, you have to know what the best cards are to apply for. Not all business credit cards are created equal. So make sure you pay attention because I'm about to show you how to secure a bag just by using your credit cards for normal business activities. And if you're getting value from this video so far, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so we can push this video out to more bag chasers just like yourself and keep running up this bag together. Now, when you first get started with business credit cards, I do recommend that you start with ones that don't have an annual fee and to get the ones that have the best sign-up bonuses. In my personal experience, some of the best credit card companies that can accomplish both of these are Chase and American Express. These are two of the biggest credit card companies out there that are well known for giving great sign-up bonuses for new card holders, as well as offering some of the best rewards programs out there as well. I recently paid for the majority of my vacation to Bali all by using the points that I earned just from my Amex cards. But before I tell you all about that, let's actually first take a look at the Chase Inc. Business Unlimited card. I recently added this card to my collection and I've already racked up over 100,000 rewards points. Not only that, but they started me off with a credit limit of $25,000. Now this card doesn't have an annual fee and they start you off with 12 months of 0% APR. And you earn 1.5% back on every purchase, which makes this a really good starter card for your business if you qualify for the criteria to be approved, which I'll talk more about in a minute. But first, I want to show you my absolute favorite card to get started with for new business owners looking to get started with business credit. And that is the Blue Business Plus card from American Express. This was one of the very first cards that I got started with, and I was easily able to hit their sign-up bonus of an additional 15,000 rewards points just by spending about $3,000 in my first three months. And this card also offers you a 12 month interest free period and doesn't have any annual fee. This can be the perfect card if you're just now getting started on your business credit journey and it'll put you in the Amex system, which means any future Amex cards that you apply for will only be a soft pool on your credit profile. And speaking of credit, because both of these business credit cards will require you to do a personal guarantee when going through the application process, I would recommend having at least a credit score of 700 when you go to apply for either of them. You also wanna make sure your credit utilization is under 30%, so you have the best chance at getting approved and getting a high limit when you go to apply. So if you're ready to pull the trigger on either of these business credit cards, I dropped the link to start the process in the description below. And by using my link, not only will you get qualified for a great starting signup bonus, but you'll also be supporting this channel at the same time. So up to this point, we've covered how you can use the power of business credit cards to invest in income producing assets without using any money out of your pocket. 
the multiple ways you or your business entity can apply to get business credit cards and some of the best business credit cards that you can start with to get the most bang for your buck. Now, the only thing left to do is to apply for some of these business credit cards and start taking advantage of some of the plays I've discussed today. And I know if you're just now learning about business credit, the application for some of these business credit cards can be a little bit confusing and even intimidating. But since you've made it this far in the video, I'm gonna walk you through an actual business credit card application so you feel a bit more confident running this play on your own. Let's go ahead and take a look at the application for the Amex Business Plus card that I mentioned previously. All right, so here we have the application for the Blue Business Plus credit card. So let's jump right into it. As you see, the first thing we'll have to do is put in our email address, pretty straightforward there. Then let's go down to the next section where we'll actually have to start putting in our business information. So for legal business name, you wanna go ahead and put your business entity first thing we have to do here is put in our legal business name and for that you would just want to go ahead and put in the name of your business entity and if your company has a dba which is a doing business as name something other than the business entity name you want to put it here but for everyone else you want to just go ahead and select company does not have a dba next section we have is the business address for your business this is where structuring your business up front really comes into play i personally use a virtual office for my business you can get this at a provider like Regis. And if you don't have a business address, this is where you'll also put your personal address if that's what you're using for your business. The next thing you want to do is go ahead and put your business phone number in. I actually use a separate phone line for my business so that it's separate from my personal line. But if you don't have that, you can also use a toll free number provider like Grasshopper here and just go ahead and put that information in right here. Next section we have here is industry type. And this is probably one of the sections that I get the most questions about. But if we go ahead and click in industry type, you see that we have multiple industries here. For myself as a business consultant company, I would just choose other, but you just wanna make sure that you try to find the category that best fits your business type there. Now, if you do wanna deeper dive into business categorization, make sure at some point you check out this video where I explain how to understand business categories and how to not get flagged as high risk. But as I said, for my company, since it's not listed, I'll go ahead and choose other. Now for company structure, for a single member LLC, I would choose the corporation option, but as as you can see they also have different type of business entities including the sole proprietorship now when you choose the corporation option as you can see you do have to indicate whether you have controlling interest over 25 percent and if there are any other members of your LLC who may have over 25 percent ownership as well now for years in business just think back to when your business first started and just pick the date that's closest to that on the drop down now for number of employees if you just started your business you probably haven't hired anyone yet so in this case I would just put one but of course, if you do have any W-2 employees on your staff, you want to go ahead and indicate them in this number as well. Next up, we have annual business revenue. And these next couple questions are some of the biggest determining factors of what type of limit that the credit card lenders want to give you. Now, you definitely want to be honest here and go ahead and just put down what you truly think you can make in a year. And of course, if you're a smaller business, the lenders do know you'll be making a lot less than bigger businesses who may be at tens of thousands of dollars. But in this case, I'll go ahead and just put $12,000, which will mirror what we talked about in the Toro example. For estimated monthly spend, once again, just be honest here. In this case, I'll go ahead and just put $500 per month. And for federal tax ID, this is also known as your employer identification number, which we touched on previously. And you can easily, like I said, go ahead and obtain this from the IRS website at irs.gov. And when you do get it, you just want to enter it here. Also, if you are a sole prop and you're using your personal information, this is where you will put your social security number. Next up, you have to indicate your role in your company. And if you're the only one in your company, I would just select owner but make sure you select the option that best fits what you do in your business. Next up, we have personal information. And this section is pretty straightforward. Here, you just wanna go ahead and put in all your personal info, including things like your name and your home address. In this section, they also ask for your social security number. And this is important because as we indicated, this card is gonna be a personal guarantee. So this is where they're gonna be able to access your personal information and pull your credit profile from your social security number. Now in this next box, they ask you your total annual income. And this is where you you want to put how much money you're making from your nine to five and you can also include any other sources that you have that are taxable 
as you can see from this section total annual income also includes revenue sources like investments and rental properties as well so if you get any income from those you definitely want to include in this section now for non-taxable income this is for if you do receive anything like disability social security and child support or alimony you can go ahead and put that here but if not you just want to go ahead and put zero and at this point we're pretty much at the end of the application so you just want to go ahead and tell american express where you want them to send your bill whether to your business or your home address then go ahead and make sure you read all the terms and conditions that are listed here as well and once you get done that you just want to go ahead and click submit application now if you met all the criteria that i talked about in this video you should stand a good chance of getting approved for this car but of course there are still some instances where you may get denied for one reason or the other now when a car issuer does deny your application they are required by law to go ahead and send you by mail a document that clearly explains why you were denied but for a faster response in a situation like this i would recommend that you call their reconsideration line directly not only will a rep tell you exactly what's holding you back from approval but you get the chance to talk to a real person and then give them a little bit more background that they might need about your business and this can actually sometimes lead to a decision reversal and help you get approved for the car so don't sleep on a reconsideration follow-up method just in case you do get denied all in all my biggest takeaways for you from this video would be to one understand the power business credit cards have to help you start growing your business from the ground up with little to no money and two that there are many ways to qualify for a business credit card no matter what stage of your business that you're in so if you're ready to take the leap and start securing it back with any of the business credit cards that i talked about today make sure you hit the application links in the description below and if you are in a position like i was a few years ago and maybe you're not yet ready to apply for business credit cards because of your personal credit situation make sure you watch this video next where i explain the exact formula i use to get out of a financial rut and put myself in a better position to obtain financial freedom